the first thing we want to look at is reinstalling Grub um, in case you lost your bootloader. Something happened, you know, virus, or perhaps Windows uh, terminated the Grub bootloader with extreme prejudice, as it often does when you are trying to fix Windows. So what you can do, um, we can either go here, computer, and we can mount. Notice this icon appears here, the file system this way. And now here's our file system leading to our partition. Now what we want to do is open a terminal. So Linux equivalent of a command prompt. And minus the camera woman today, so I'm gonna have to do this single handedly. But I'll try to aim it so you can see. I want to go to my root directory. So I'm gonna go And I'll do a listing, and you can see now these are the this is the file system on the CD that mounts under the live CD. What I want to do is go to a folder called Media. You can see it right there. Um, and once I'm in Media, there's a folder called Disk, and that's what it actually mounts that partition to. When I mounted it it mounted it to the disk folder on the CD in the file system. So I'm going to again change to the disk folder and I'll go ahead and clear the screen and when I do I'll do a listing. Now you can see here's the actual file system on my partition. I'll try to zoom in there. What I want to do is go to this folder boot subdirectory inside of it we want to go to called grub and from here I'll do another listing if this were Fedora um, you'd want to edit or view the grub.com file since this is Ubuntu we want to view the menu.lst file and I'll use the cat command and I'm going to pipe it to less so we can kind of scroll through it because we need to get this information before we reinstall Grub. Now remember, piping just takes the output of one command and sends it as an input to another command. And less just gives us the ability to scroll the screen. Um, sort of like, remember in the old DOS command prompts, you could use the command type and then space forward slash P and that would pause it so you could scroll through things. Well, that's what this does in Unix or Linux. So I'm going to do that and we'll scroll through, scroll through and look at, the, can look at the boot configuration file here. Now these first few lines are comments, so they're not really that important. Let's go down past where we have all of the pound symbols, which are the comment tags. And so we'll get to the important part. The meat and potatoes are what we need to actually repair the file system. Now here's what we need. Now we're at, at an important part. This is the information that we need right here. See where it says title Ubuntu, kernel 2.6.2.0.16 generic and root hd05. We need to know that because we have to pass that in to the grub command um, so we can set the root before we reinstall the bootloader. So remember that and while we're here we'll just take a look at some of the other entries in the menu.lst file or again if you're in Fedora the grub.conf file. But in addition notice here's kernel repair option. I'll scroll down again using less. If I come down here there's memory test. Here's my Windows XP Professional Service Pack 2 and Vista entry. And notice how it's all mapped to different partitions. Now, Linux was an HD05. This is, you can't really tell, the camera won't focus, but that's, all right. In this case, root HD00. And that maps it out to the Windows bootloader. And in this case, it used to be boot INI when I just had XP in 2003. Now that I have XP and Vista, the BCD store has overwritten that. So. Actually, um, there is no boot INI file there. You know, at least as far it, it, it uses uh, Vista's BCD store. But if I were to go there, that's where it would map to. So anyway, what we needed was again up top. Remember, it was HT05. So it starts at zero. So partition, you know, five is actually partition six or the sixth partition. The zero is the physical disk. I've only got one physical disk. If I had more than one, then you know, I'd have HT0 would be the first one. HT1 would be the second one. So the first physical disk, and then five, or the sixth partition, is where my Linux installation is installed. 
and we'll again take a look at that. If I were to use the command sudo fdisk-l, you'd be able to see that. Here, when we go through the commands, um, here, are all, here are all of the partitions I have set up on you know, this Acer laptop. If I go over here, the file type, that first one there where you see HP NTFS under system, that's Windows XP Professional. The next one, HPFS NTFS is Vista. The third one is a data drive. Remember, you can have four primary partitions, one extended drive, and logical drives up to the point where you have drive letters to assign to them. So in this case, three primary partitions there, and then the fourth partition becomes an extended one with two logical drives. One is Type 82, a Linux swap. And that one right there, Type 83, is the Linux system partition. And that's the one we're interested in, and that is device SDA6. So having looked at the mini list file or the grubcom file and having run fdisk, we're pretty sure of what we need. I'll go ahead and clear the screen real quick. I'm going to hop up here. I'm going to use the command grub. And when I do, oops, forgetting I'm on Ubuntu. Let me do sudo grub. If you, very important, if, if, if you don't use sudo in Ubuntu, this won't work properly. You won't have the right permissions and it won't be able to find the drive. So not grub by itself, but sudo grub. All right, let's go into grub. Now there's a grub prompt. And I want to specify the root of my Linux system partition. So it's going to be root space, and I'm typing with one hand here, so I apologize for being so slow. ht0, 5, first physical drive, and the sixth partition. But since it starts at 0, the sixth partition is you know, delineated by using the number 5. And OK, now I've set the root. Now I want to do setup. And setup is just going to be the physical drive. I want to go ahead and set up the boot loader on the physical drive HD0. So set up HD0. Oops, let me add a space there. I'm going go on with one hand in the dark here. Okay, and there we go. So it succeeded. Now our Linux system will be bootable again. We've reinstalled Grub. And all we want to do is exit. And then you could just reboot off the live CD and your, your Linux system will now be bootable again. Grub has been reinstalled. Windows has not been harmed. So the BCD store is still there. Vista will still boot. XP will still boot. And now, once again, your Linux, Ubuntu, or Fedora will boot.